Hey everyone and welcome back to Deeper Roots. People are difficult and we all know that. People make things weird and sometimes there can be this tension between people. Tension is what makes relationships hard and not just romantic ones but every kind of relationship that we have with each other. We can disagree on a load of things or we can say one thing and not follow through such as the complexity of being with people. But despite these difficulties, people are inherently social. God designed us in that way, so despite the difficulties of life, we can look to each other and find some help with the people that we know, our brethren. But unless you live in a place where there's only perfect people, there's no exception to the fact that we're going to have relationship problems. We might feel like someone did something unfair, so then we become bitter or angry with that person. And this includes brothers and sisters within the church. So, the question a listener submitted for today's podcast is, how should Christians deal with bitterness and resentment with other brethren? If you like this podcast and you want to see it grow, you can visit our church website, which is ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. There you can see where we publish our podcasts, and you can also submit questions of your own using the form that's on that page. Asking a question online is 100% anonymous, so you don't have to worry about asking a question that you might be afraid to ask. And it can really be a great blessing to have someone have a conversation about your question through a biblical lens. Thank you for joining us today. Now let's get to the conversation. everyone for joining us today we have uh, our crew today actually we have a pastor here with us and uh, uh, we have uh, my brother Kevin who's back he's the actually the first person who was a guest on deeper roots we want to welcome him back hello um, the last time you were here we actually like had one microphone in the middle of the table we were recording that way and I we didn't know what we were doing but hopefully we know a little bit more what we're doing right now yeah. um, Fancy mics. So. <laughs> to the east side. <laughs> um, so the question for today was a question that was submitted by a listener. The question is, how should Christians deal with bitterness and resentment with other brethren? They wanted to clarify, and they said, people are bound to disagree. However, how does Christ show what? Excuse me. How does Christ show us to love our brothers and sisters without judgment and meet them where they're at? I think this is something that we deal with all the time. Uh, I think I can say for myself, I deal, I struggle with this a lot. Just the idea of bitterness and holding thing, like holding grudges. I don't like to say I do, but I know I do, so I have to say it. <laughs> so, um, Pastor, do you want to talk about it? Sure. That's a great question, first of all. And second of all, it's a very human question, I guess. We could say it's uh, something we all struggle with. Um, sometimes, you know, you get questions, your field questions, where it, maybe it's going to be something that more... It's more like something that one person struggles over compared to someone else. But this is something I, I think all of us have to learn to deal with about how to deal with resentment, how to deal with wrongs. And and I, I am going to ask you, uh, Derek, if you could reread the question because there's a lot of wording there mm-hmm. in the description because it says something about um, how do we learn to deal with uh, disagreements. Because everybody has a... What does it say? The, the, uh, the clarification? Yeah, the clarification. Uh, people are bound to disagree. However, how disagree. does mm-hmm. how does Christ show us to love our brothers and sisters without judgment and meet them where they're at? Yeah. I think we we need to under, uh, start there. You know, yeah, we are going to disagree, and, but it also we have to talk about what we disagree on. I mean, there's going to be things we disagree on as Christians when it comes to doctrine, when it comes to biblical teaching, that uh, even then, you know, we can't allow for resentment, we can't allow for unforgiveness, but sometimes there is a, a need to have separation from certain groups that believe things that we don't agree with, right? There, so there's those kind of disagreements. But I think probably the the person asking the question is talking more about this, the general disagreements on things or opinions and that, like they say, opinions come by the dozen. And yeah, most of those kind of little non-doctrinal, non-biblical disagreements is the things that tend to really get 
people into knots and cause divisions and cause um, uh, a, f a friction with b between church members. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, what are some of the things that you've seen most Christians uh, disagree on or or tend to fight about, which really is unnecessary? <laughs> Yeah, there's there's a few some of the like hot button topics are like politics mm -hmm. and uh, you know even faith itself even between people who call themselves Christians there's a lot of differences and uh, there's a lot of differences just between people I feel like this does stem a little bit from feeling threatened this is a position that uh, I'm sort of jumping a few steps here <laughs> but um uh in, in my experience, uh, when I feel like I've held a grudge or I felt bitter towards people, it's because they showed a different uh, mindset that I'm not used to, or a or they've done things I'm just not okay with. Uh, maybe for them it's been uh, for them it's normal, uh, but uh, when I look back at those times, it's a safety that I'm sort of. It's a fear that I have, fear for my own safety, either for my ideals being challenged or. Um, I'm feeling physically threatened, but I don't know why. It's sort of an irrational fear that I, that I myself have felt beforehand. I try to step back a little bit um, if I ever do catch myself, but I understand there's like a lot of levels of bitterness that people can go through. Um, people can hold these grudges for a very, very long time, or sometimes it's uh, sometimes people think it's warranted too. Mm hmm. Could we? Would it be fair to say there is a necessary bitterness sometimes people deal with, and then there's warranted bitterness that is genuinely. I mean, it's because they were wronged, and the, what I'm trying to get to is that yeah, you know, sometimes uh, Christians need to learn to differ differentiate between opinions, and we need to learn give ourselves that room to be able to differ in areas where it's not biblical where it's not something clear in the bible okay like if someone says well i think when well, it always starts with what i think or i feel i think it's okay to have sex before marriage of course the bible is clear on that topic so of course there might be a disagreement and 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 am i and i have to learn to <coughs> leave them to god but even then i can't have resentment against them for holding a position which is unbiblical but Beyond that, sometimes there's things like you said, uh, politics, you know, or or whether we go to the movies or not, and stuff like that. That are more preference, and t people that get to tend to get all caught up in these little di uh, differences of opinion. And, they, and and honestly, like I I always say, there's some people that are sort of sort of geared towards wanting conflict more than others, mm -hmm. and those people are geared towards find conflict are always going to find something to be conflictive about. And, and that's what the first level, what I would say, if you're someone dealing with that kind of attitude, the Bible says we have to lead with love and we have to learn to appreciate the differences within us. Because sometimes not everyone's going to be the same opinion on things that are non-biblical. People are going to have different views, religion, uh, I mean, our biblical views on God and, 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 and things are one thing. But when it comes to pol politics and all that stuff, we need to be able to love each other despite the differences and that's important in those areas so we sort of have to be thick-skinned i don't know if you've seen that right you know. learn to be thick-skinned and not let little things sort of bother us and in in, in in uh differences that we might hold when it comes to non-biblical things so that that's what i would classify a necessary uh, bitterness or grudges that we hold but there are some that are genuine i mean it's because you were really wronged right um and those things are meant to get under your skin a, a, a dagger is supposed to get exactly. under your skin like it's not like these are small things that come by but um every time i catch myself um i was just teaching this week actually this is very very thing for me and i was bitter towards a child <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, 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 well that's if, easy <laughs> if you guys don't know i i teach a, a summer program and i'm uh, having to deal with new kids every week and for the most part it's always fun for me to be able to interact with the children and you know talk back and forth and it's, you know it's fun for them fun for me we have discussions about their favorite games but you know one of these children had a particular attitude with me now the, this same week I had to you know let a children let a child go um, because of their because of their behavior but this one was just attitude not behavior and it was particularly against me 
um, I caught myself raising my voice against the child whenever um, he was uh, cheating in a game or whenever he started trying to have his own way. But what I had to do was I had to remove myself from the situation. If, like, because obviously this child had something bitter against me, I can't reciprocate that. Probably mm -hmm. bitterness starts with another person bitter with you. Uh, I had to remove myself from the situation. I had to let somebody else take over it. And this is not between me and the child because I'm treating the other kids okay. This is just something that, you know, is a part of their vision. I can't try to, like, get in the way and try to fix them. I... I can. I, the only thing I could. I can't. I could barely fix myself. But in this position, it's preferable for me to go to another classroom. Thankfully, I'm not the teacher. Teacher. There's another teacher in there. But to try to remove myself from the situation, have another person take over in my stead for that recess game or for that activity, so that way they could handle that ch child a little bit better. Yes, they're still a little bit antagonistic towards the other people. But I noticed that I myself started to gain a bitterness. In that mm. moment, this wouldn't have been fun for anybody, and it was just out of fear that he was going to go into my authority, and he's going to bring other people with him. So mm -hmm. it was better for just for me to remove myself. Again, there was that fear, but you always have to take a look at yourself. If the other person's bitter and that's making you bitter, it's better to try to distance yourself from those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bitterness um, gives birth to more bitterness mm -hmm. if, it's, if you don't know how to deal with it. Because you d will get wronged in this life. And I sort of go back to the whole illustration. I'm sort of thinking about this question. I was thinking about that um, that saying where you say you have to have thick skin. And then so where does, where does that come from? If you think about it, it probably comes from thinking about the elephant. You know, the elephant has thick skin. Or like a seal. Or like a seal. Besides the point, but yeah. But if you, if you think about an elephant, you know, they have really thick skin. And where do they have to live? They live through in the jungle. So they're going to go through branches. They're going to go through trees. They're going to go through things that are going to want to scrape against them. Against and, they have, and they have to learn to deal with that and not let that bother them. They have thick skin. But even that thick skin can one can get penetrated mm -hmm. by an arrow or by a gun or another that, animal or an, an animal that's intentionally trying to hurt that animal. So True. there are those two two kind of things. There's so people mm -hmm. you have to learn to not let little things bother you that pe that you might just have to learn to deal with in this jungle called life <laughs> as a Christian. But there are going to be people that are going to intentionally want to hurt you. I've done things that have hurt you. <laughs> And, and that's harder to deal with. Like you said, like, uh, and if we don't learn to deal with it and you sort of bears fruit where we're get, we get resentful, we become better against the person. Or it gives birth to other sins as well, like retaliation, you know, like Jesus said, not eye for an eye anymore. It should be love your neighbor, you know, love them. Mm -hmm. uh, do good to those who to pers persecute you. So that's why it's important for us to learn how to deal with uh, resentment and how to deal with bitterness because we do live in, in a pl in in life where there's going to be little things that are going to want to irk us but we need to produce thick skin but then there's the big things that we have to deal with and if we don't know how to deal with bitterness and, and resentment in our lives at the end of the day it only hurts us mm -hmm. uh, i've heard it said that bitterness is like poison right that we drink ourselves we drink ourselves th expecting the other person to die mm. but it doesn't ha work that way it only hurts us um did you have a before going to scripture? Do you have any other comment? I was going to ask about. I was going to go back to the question. This is a this is not a thing between like oh that other person's like you know a better person you see at the grocery store or the cashier, mm -hmm. uh, not not co not a coworker that you see off and on, but this is a church, a, per, a place you mm -hmm. go to regularly to serve, to learn, to love, and to lead. It's specifically talking about like resentment with other brethren in church, right. yeah. yeah, within church. And that's that, I feel like that's a, that's that's another level there because yeah. this is a place where you know ho hopefully you're supposed to feel safe here yeah. and try to and, and and very introspective trying to see how you are doing, but how do you deal with you having bitterness with another person, another person having bitterness with you, mm -hmm. and this is a more structured place too. Mm -hmm. So I think that. That's a yeah. very valid thing to talk about. That's yeah, the, the context of, of the church, because um, like that's why I, I'm saying there's those two levels where sometimes people do learn, have to learn as a Christian that there's going to, there's going to be, uh, in Spanish we would say little roses, uh, there's going to be little frictions that happen 
on a daily basis uh, or on weekly basis when we come to church. Why? Because there is always the devil here working to put us against each other. You know, but we that's where we have to learn to let little things slide, love each other, understand differences. But what about when it is a brother who did something really wrong to me or or, or, or hurt me? You know, and continues to do so. You know, continues to do so. You know, or, or embarrassed me in front of other another person. You know, and 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 did something to 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 make me look bad and. and whether it was their intention or not and i think those would be like not the branches that are i have to go through but actually someone throwing an arrow at me and as thick skin I'm, as i might be i'm going to get hurt so how do i deal with that and i think uh, that's where scripture uh, gives us the the guidance it says in hebrews 12 14 through 15 it says strive for peace with everyone uh, and for the holiness without which no one will see the lord see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. So here it's talking to a Christian group of people, Hebrews, and it says, strive for peace with everyone. What do you guys catch with that word, strive? <laughs> it's not going to be inherent. Exactly. There's be issues in the way, but you have to actually get there. It's, it takes work, and, and is it always possible? Yeah. To be at peace with everybody. No. 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 Yeah, so that's where the word strive means. Do everything that's in, po- it's in your power to be at peace. But yeah. sometimes it won't be reciprocal. You know, sometimes will, someone will still be resentful or won't want to talk to you. But you do your part in, in being at peace with everybody and for the and for the holiness without which one no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that not and that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble. Now this is where I want to ask you guys, um, what does grace have to do with what the author's saying here? Because it says, see to it that no one fails. It's sort of like where as Christians we have an obligation to do something mm-hmm. and we can fail. It says, see that no one fails to obtain the grace of God. That no, and then as a result of that, no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble. And by it, many become defiled. So what do you think in the middle of this whole issue of bitterness and being at peace with other here? Uh, Paul just inserts the grace of God that we can fail it. And that's very key because uh, the, the, the whole idea of what he's saying there, uh, see that no one fails to obtain the grace of God is that <coughs> we've been saved. We've been saved by grace, right? Yeah. We offended God. We're the ones that deserve punishment from what we did, but yet God chose to give us grace. And like another verse says, you receive grace, give grace. And many times we fail in remembering what Christ did for us by not extending that grace towards other people. By instead, we, we, we resent, we hold on to the resentment, and we want to make them pay, and we want to be judge and executioner over them because of what they did to us. And yet, we want God to do the opposite with us. And that's where he says, hey, don't, don't let grace fail you, because that's how you got saved, and that's how you need to show it towards God. Now, is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's hard. It's very, very hard because our nature is revenge. <laughs> I don't know. Are you guys, have you ever wanted revenge? <laughs> a little bit. You kind of want to take justice to your hands because you don't trust anything else around you. And I think yeah. that's the big part. You don't trust yeah. in who? God at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I want my justice now. <laughs> exactly. And, um, and we want and we want to take uh, things into our own hands and I'm going to make them pay. But then that's where it says we're failing grace. And I think it's powerful when we think of that. Where grace was here, and we fail it because we're not letting it do what it came here to do—to show us grace, so that we can show grace with others. That doesn't mean that we become a floor mat where we allow people just to hurt us, but it's just that we don't allow their actions to hurt us further by putting in the seed of bitterness within us. We open the door both to let our own uh, feeling of this bitterness or to we open the door to let it out and also at the same time let their forgiveness in or like let their let their reconciliation in mm-hmm. exactly so let's say that 
Uh, so let me, let me I have another question. What have, what do we do with people, that, other people that are bitter towards us? There will be times where, where you know we are literally minding our own business, or something happens in our lives that makes us like look different to other people. Let's say you are a young adult, and now you're uh, not a young adult. You're a teen, and you're I don't know about to have a child, right? Wow, this is a big thing. And now you're feeling that other people are acting bitter towards you for having made the wrong, dis- made, I'm quotations, wrong decision here. Um, how do you deal with that kind of bitterness? Other people giving you the eye in church. Mm-hmm. You're feeling, because other you're feeling the bitterness of the other people around you, against you. Does it go mm-hmm. back to having thick skin? Well, don't let it get to you in the sense where you're going to respond back with bitterness because that's our de facto that's our natural Mm -hmm. mode okay now he's doing it now i'm going to be mean to him that's just the way we normally act so what that goes back to jesus instructions where it says if if someone if someone hits you on the cheek put the other that that doesn't mean that okay beat up on me but it just means that i'm not going to go down to their same level yeah i'm not going to reciprocate sort of like the other passage where it says you know love your enemies if they do wrong to you do right to them love on them and 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 see that's what my answer would be biblically and i'm not saying it's easy because it's really hard to do easier said than done yeah but easier said than done but it's a resolution to say okay this person doesn't want to forgive me or is uh, is resentful against me, is bitter against me, but I'm going to make a choice to not reciprocate in the same like manner. And instead, I'm going to try to love on them and be nice to them. And maybe they're, th- of course, they're not going to be want to be around you maybe because they don't like you, but you love on them. You love on them. You try to find the ways to be nice to them because that's what the Bible says that when we do that, Asquas, I, I don't know how you say it in English, but it says asquas de fuego amontonas de sobre su cabeza, no, which was the know. idea that you had coals uh, burning in their head, which is what, what the idea there is that then their conscience starts to bother them. Because instead of seeing the de facto in you and wanting to make you uh, respond by being bitter to you, you, they, you, you respond with kindness, then it all falls on them. They're, they're, they become more of a mirror to themselves of seeing the evil that they're doing to you. And that's what the, the that verse is about. So let's say that I that something's happening in my life and other people are looking at it, right? Like let's say um, I'm doing I might be they like I might be doing drugs in secret or something like that. Um, but I'm starting to feel a bitterness from other people already because they're seeing that I'm doing something wrong, right? And uh, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feel ill will against them and but they are definitely like looking at me towards a certain in a certain way. Now, aside from my own sin, what can I do about that bitterness? I feel like I'm doing something wrong, right? And it might not even be a sin. People are looking at you wrong. People are gossiping about you. And this this is a bitterness that is acting against you, right? What can I do at that point? Yeah. I feel like I'm stuck. And my bitterness might not be towards those people, but it might be collectively against the church. Yeah. Well, a... Uh B comes before, I mean, comes after B, after A, and C comes after B. There's an order to things. You're describing a person who's in a sin that is participating in a sin because of the how they're tr- he's being treated, he's having resentment. He'll never be able to deal with the resentment unless he learns to deal with his other sin first because there's sins that are ha- harder to deal with. And this is one of those that are for higher levels of spirituality. As you mature, you learn to deal with this thing of resentment and 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 and, and anger and bitterness. Uh, but stopping the other sins are things that, as a as a Christian, I should learn to deal with those first before I can graduate and deal with the other things. The person who's uh, dealing with anger and bitterness because they're already in diving into another sin is that's the first thing he has to deal with. He can't master this one without mastering the first one. And uh, yeah, but then. Like I said, I guess we could go into another topic of how the church is treating with them or whatever. Yeah, of course, the church should be treating them correctly, of mm-hmm. course, because then that, that's not going to open up to the repentance and the uh, redemption that you want to see in that person who is sinning and who is dealing with that. A church needs to deal with sin, but deal with it correctly as well, mm-hmm. as in love and grace as well. Right. So, so if... For just the bitterness that other people are, like, if other people are, are acting bitter towards me, 
where can I go to amend that? Mm-hmm. To amend that bitterness, or if another, or I'm ass- this is me assuming that I don't know that I'm bitter towards another person, or that that I that I feel like I'm the victim here. How do I go? How do I go to? How do I go through that? So, but uh, paint the picture for me again. So okay. you you're so being wronged. I'm being wronged, and you're the Christian that wants to do right. Right. Okay, and you're being wronged, and someone's being bitter towards you. Yes. Okay, and so what can I, you do to? What can I do to amend those? Yeah. To amend that. Well, uh, if you haven't had the chance to go up to that person and talk, you know that's the first thing. Go and mm-hmm. talk. Why are you mad at me? What's going on? Why are you so bitter with me? Is there something I have done to offend you? Right, and try to uh, have reconciliation. Like yesterday, I mean, last week we had Pastor Pelletier here, and in his uh, one of the questions he answered, he said, uh, "For there to be reconciliation, there needs mm-hmm. to be two things. There needs to be uh, repentance, and there needs to be uh, forgiveness." Right. So, in this case, let's say maybe you're unaware of something that you did. The person's resentful of for. So then you go up to them and you talk to them so that you could present. Maybe they'll say, you did this, this, and this to me, and you have a chance to say, oh, I'm so sorry. Repentance. And then let's say they don't want to forgive you and they want to stay in in, 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 in bitterness. So A, got ha- happened, but this, this person doesn't want to forgive you. So then what do you do then? If you already tried, you already talked to them, you already tried to find reconciliation by saying sorry and seeing if they would forgive you and they don't want to, then what you can do there is just pray for them and you be at peace and say, okay, I already did my part. You can't change them. You can't force them to forgive you. Mm-hmm. You can't force them to not be resentful if they want to stay in bitterness. But at least you already try to make peace. And you make mm-hmm. sure you don't stay in resentment against them. Because one wrong doesn't make uh, another wrong doesn't make another wrong right you know just because you uh, just because the other person is still bitter doesn't mean that you are still sinning mm-hmm. like you've already done the part that you needed to play like yeah you've already sinned and someone is already affected and someone is already bitter at you but or in this in this situation uh but once you've come to terms with the fact that oh i have sinned or like i've i've wronged this person I, I want to uh, repent from this sin. I want to make sure that this person's okay. And then you go and ask for that forgiveness because of your repentance. They're not willing to forgive. That's kind of in their ballpark now. You, yeah. like, you're not the one who has to deal with serve. Sort of like, like the idea of that saying, you know, it's now they're in their court, you know. You already, your responsibility was to send the ball that way. <laughs> what they do with it now that it's in their court, it's their thing. You know, it's you chose to you chose to do the right thing by sending the ball over to them, talking to them, trying to make peace. They don't want to make peace. Now it's their turn to try to serve it back. But if they choose to remain in that in in that bitterness, that's where the Bible says again in that verse. I'll continue reading. It says, "See to that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble." When we let that root, it's like a seed. When we let it grow, then it springs up. That's the idea of it pushing through the dirt. And what causes trouble. That's when we've let it fester inside our lives and we haven't dealt with it. And then it says, and by it many become defiled. We can't skip over that part because what happens is bitterness inside a church can propagate, can infect other people. And all you can do is try to deal with it yourself, what you, your responsibility. And of course, to your church leadership, if there's an issue, try to work with, work with it too. Because if not, it can be contagious. It can be contagious. Another verse real quick, it says, Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, it says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as, and here's the key, as God in Christ forgave you. Again, going back to that, Mm -hmm. not feeling the grace. Because Christ forgave us, we have to learn to forgive others. And and I'm just going to say this from my personal experience. Life's too short to live with resentment. I lived with resentment a long time against my father. And the day I chose to forgive him, I was freed. He's still there. He still chooses to live the way he wants to live. But I'm no longer attached to him. His actions and the past and the memories no longer has the power over my present and my future because I chose to give a, give give Christ the the right to 
exact judgment over him. Because at the end of the day, that's what we do when we don't when we choose not to forgive, when we choose to hold on to resentment, when we choose to hold on to bitterness. What we're literally saying is, Christ, let me judge this. I'm going to be judge, and I'm going to be executioner, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be nice to that person until they do right to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then when we let go and we say, Christ, you know, whatever, you, I'll let you deal with them. I forgive. And that's when we get, we get released. We become free. And God will deal with them. God will deal with their issues. And their, their thing, but at least it's no, it's no longer going to bring me down with them. It's like um, when you're at your work and they give you a job description, uh, you... Like all you need to do when you're at your workplace is hopefully what's on the job description, but it's up to you to keep on adding those things. Like, all right, I'm going to be uh, uh, working on this part of the company, and I'm going to be executing all my wrath against everyone, and then I'm also going to do this and this and this thing. Uh, it just sounds like extra work. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. There's another saying about bitterness <laughs> is just like letting someone live rent free in your head. Yeah. Uh, right. That's a common saying nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so true because yeah. we allow them to have the control over us. You know, in 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 counseling, uh, both Christian and otherwise, because <coughs> I've seen this happen in um, in just secular counseling as well. There's a practice where sometimes. The people hold such bitterness and, 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 and anger towards someone that they had no longer have the opportunity to resolve it with. Their father, their mother, someone who, who's no longer here, they died. And unfortunately, it's like we said, the first step is to try to resolve it. And if they don't have that chance, they can fester. So one of the things they do is they put up the empty chair and, and they ask them to write a letter to that person about everything they have anger against them everything they resent but to the point of saying I forgive I'm no longer going to hold this against you I forgive you and they have to read it to an empty chair because it's for the counselor ask them to do that just to go through that cycle of being able to let go mm -hmm. because they no longer have the person the actual person to deal with it but they still are trapped by it even though that person no longer lives um I have a few follow-up questions. So what about bitterness when it comes f to uh, broken trust? Like someone lied or someone did that they, uh, someone did something, didn't do something that they had promised to do. Um, and now you have this bitterness. How do, how would I work with that? How would you work with that? Uh, depends on the case I guess if it's something where the person messed up and, and it's one time or whatever and you, yeah we have to be people that is, are willing to give chances because of course uh, God gives many us many chances you know mm -hmm. not just the second chances the third fourth fifth you know it gives us so many chances so we have to be willing to also give people the benefit of doubt and give them an opportunity to redeem themselves when there's re when there's repentance oh I'm sorry I messed up you know but what about in the case where they've broken your trust over and over and over again you also have to realize that forgiveness <coughs> doesn't equate immediate trust mm -hmm. uh, forgiveness uh, it can be given but trust has to be re-earned many times uh, and and like I said we have to be willing to give a chance if it's a one-time thing or whatever but if it's something that of course over and over and over and over again has been done and it's hard to trust anymore I, you have to understand just because I forgave you doesn't mean I automatically trust you. And that's two different issues mm -hmm. uh, because you've, you've broken my trust so many times. So I, you have to, I'm willing to give you the chance to earn that trust back in my life, but it's going to take time. Um, so these are kind of, uh, these questions are a little bit more, I think there's a little bit simpler questions, but these are just questions I think that everyone kind of should understand. Uh, well, actually, no, this one's not super simple. How do I identify bitterness within myself? <laughs> That's not a simple question, my bad. Prayer. <laughs> Prayer. 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 Yeah. Bitterness is definitely one of the things that you might realize quickly, but it also can easily be masked. And we can think, oh, no, I'm okay. I don't have bitterness. And we sort of... Uh, mask it and we don't want to admit it to ourselves but all our actions reveal that there is a root of bitterness in us and the way we treat someone because I've dealt with people as I'm all like hermana or, or brother why do you treat so and so like that uh, you must have some bitter no I don't but you keep doing this and that mm -hmm. 
there's something behind this and sometimes people don't want to admit to themselves so the best thing is to pray the prayer that that uh, David says in Psalm 139 negative see if there's any bitter, uh, wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting yeah, it's saying, Lord, yeah where it says Lord you have known me you know me you know the innermost parts of me and 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 sometimes we just need to remind ourselves and say lord please reveal to me if i do have this bitterness because i can't see it other people tell me i'm bitter other people say my actions are bitter and i don't see it but we have to be willing to let god reveal it to us because mm -hmm. our actions are just symptomatic mm -hmm. of the bitterness within us many times okay um just for the for the listener, we actually talked a little bit about forgiveness. Uh, actually, a, a little while ago, uh, if you want to look at, if you want to listen to any of our other episodes about forgiveness, uh, I think we also touch on the topics of bitterness in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the top the episodes are called "Does God Forgive and Forget," and also "How Many Times Does God Forgive?" Mm -hmm. um, obviously. Like we can talk about forgiveness and uh, forgiveness or the whole idea of like forgiveness and uh, forgiving and forgetting. Uh, that's an attribute that God, only God has. Pe as people, we don't forget things. We don't forget. We uh, we don't forget that things have happened. Uh, and uh, like the question, at, like the follow up question I asked, like sometimes our our trust is broken. Our justice system is violated. Uh, so how are we supposed to move on and i think that's just that's where prayer comes in that's where wise counsel comes in mm -hmm. uh to just be able to just let go as pastor said yeah. give give god the right to execute judgment yeah. and on it not us because we're, we're just we're uh, recipients of grace so we have no right to execute judgment on others uh, we have to just give grace as well and mm -hmm. that means sometimes having to distance ourselves from someone because it's no longer uh, he a healthy relationship whatever but at least that we don't ha hold that resentment within our hearts yeah. uh, and, and cause da damage to ourselves yeah. um, any notes? no I actually was about to ask a question but uh, I think we answered that already. That, the question that I had was, what if I see one of my friends uh, being either the victim or the perpetrator of bitterness? Mm -hmm. uh, what do I do? And I think uh, a good way of doing it is by approaching you know, the trusted person, obviously, to go and see, like, hey, why are you treating them like this? Or, hey, are you okay like that? Or, mm -hmm. are you okay? Are you a lot, should, you be an inter should you be an intermediary for, for, in case you see or you witness bitterness or you witness antagonization inside the church what 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 is my position here if i see this i'm a third party it, it all depends on your level of relationship with the people that involved but if you are if you have that opportunity yeah definitely god uses other people there's three ways god speaks to us uh got the word uh situations and through people and sometimes you can be that person if you have that accessibility to that situation and that person's uh especially if the person that you need to talk to you already have a certain level of relationship with them and you can come alongside you know not in judgment but alongside and say hey i've noticed you've done this and this and this what's going on are you bitter against this person because that may be your opportunity to pour uh, truth into them and to and to love on them and just guide them into dealing with their bitterness yeah so it all depends on the situation but if god gives you that ability uh definitely we we, we can be tools that he uses okay i think that's a good way to good uh, place to end the episode i want to thank you everyone for joining uh in the podcast thank you kevin for joining us in this episode and thank you pastor Welcome for leading back, us to the conversation um if you have any questions yourself maybe it's a follow-up to this question or if it's just a completely different question altogether i encourage you please submit a question online it's uh we have a website it's www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots we've been getting a lot of excellent questions lately mm -hmm. uh have, one yeah. this one included um and uh, we can't wait to be able to take the opportunity to answer them uh so again thank you for joining us and i hope that you go join us again next week uh, in next week's podcast, next week's episode. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Vidanueva, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.